our number dose. Yep, number yeah, two. Yeah, number dose. All right, so we're here to tell you about a few things coming up. Uh, let's start with uh, the first day of the week, Sunday. Sunday. Sunday, we've got Blood Bowl. Rawr. Blood Bowl. Uh, and I think Blood Bowl, it's just a big board, right, that looks like a football field. Yes. And they got monsters playing against Playing each against other. one another. They're playing football. Playing football, try to get a weakness, destroy a monster so your guy can get through and score points. All right, all right. That sounds fun. Yep. I think Wade uh, Wade plays that, doesn't he? Yep, he was. The Hobbin Doggler? Yeah, the Hobbin Doggler. Yeah. Uh, he was yeah. trying to get a tournament. I don't know if that successfully happened or not. Well, I know he was having problems, so you guys got to come up here and play Blood, Blood Bowl with Arr! Wade. Yeah, yeah. All right, also on Sunday, we got the Pokemon. The big Pokemon. All I know from Pokemon is a Squirtle, Squirtle, and a Pikachu. Charizard. Oh, Charizard! Charizard. He's got the tail that's on fire. Yeah. Yeah. Are there more? I, that, well, you got to get say, them all. Is that well? The they you say you got to catch them all, but if there's only three, how hard is that? Well, if that's just what you know. Oh. So there's more out there. I believe think. there's a lot. You got to beat the bushes. Yeah. To get, get them out. out. Scary. What was the deal with that Pokemon Go? What was that thing? Well, that was you know you could go around and try to find these things. So for yeah. real, they'd be out there. Well, they were in augmented reality. What is, so they're on your on your phone. On your phone. Oh. And then they had a big gathering. So were these like ghost Pokemon that would only show up on your phone? They're like spectral spirits. That's what it was. It was kind of like Ghostbusters for, oh. for, for Pokemon. Okay, you don't want to cross the Pokies. No, or whatever. You threw your phone down. Right. And if you threw your phone down under the Pokemon, he went in there. Ah. The way I okay. understand. Well, that makes yeah. sense. That makes sense. That something fun to do on a Sunday. Throw your phone on the floor. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. So a lot right. of iPhones that one. And then and then the Pathfinder. We talked about. We that brought last that out. We the brought Pathfinder that out. was yeah. not at all what we thought it was. The Pathfinder no. was a big old board game. It had chains and pirates and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, it looked Bunch fun. Of dice. It looked fun. It was one of those things you have to be vested in. It looked like a long game. Yeah, yeah, it seems like it's long, yeah. but but uh, it seemed like it was worth the investment. Yeah. All right, so let's move to Monday. What do we got Monday? Monday, of course, is ladies' night. Uh-huh. That's the ladies' D&D the night. D &D. They play the D&D. &D. Again, we talked about this. It's a very dedicated group. That sometimes they'll come up in costume. If you're interested, if you're unsure about what D and D is, just come up. And please hang out. come check it out. Yeah, just come up and hang they're out. Very, are... very welcoming group. Yeah, they're 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 very serious about what they do. But yes. They welcome in all all people that are interested. All newcomers. Yeah, yeah. All right, and then also they have the anime day. Anime night. night. Now, did we ask Roger? That's what, what I was wondering. Roger, Roger, where's Roger? Roger! He's not here. Okay, we'll get So let's assume they're going to have Sailor Moon this week. Yeah, that's, that, that was always my option, Sailor Moon. I think it's going to be Sailor Moon, or it's going to be uh, maybe one of those Kung Fu movies. Yes. Maybe they'll do that. All right, Tuesday, we're doing the uh, the X-Wing again. Yeah, again, we're, we're moving on. One. We're moving on. And they're going to a different mission. Mission number four. Mission four. That's from five to eight, right? And is that Hobbin Doggler again? I, I've seen Hobbin Doggler play the X Wing, but I don't know if he's hosting the X Wing. Okay. okay. I, I don't know. Here's my thing. I don't know how many missions he's run and if he's qualified to run mission four. Okay. And let me ask you this. I'm just making an assumption. It says X Wing, but I'm assuming there's TIE Fighters involved. Oh, I would hope so. Okay. I would want to play as a TIE Fighter. I know that. Yeah. But here's what I'm thinking with the missions. Do you have to have so many hours, kind of like a pilot? You know, if you're going to be a pilot, you have to train and get all these hours and you have to log all this stuff. Is it the same thing with the missions? Do you have to, do you have to fly so many X Wing? So I think it's, I think, I'm assuming it's more objective based. It's objective we're, we're based. Doing, we're doing mission number okay. four, new objective. All right. Check, I did that, that kind of thing. Yes, something probably in, in right. the Hoth system. So from five to eight, something in the Hoth system. Yeah, probably. Right. So uh, every Tuesday from five to eight, they do the x one. Yes. All right. So Wednesday. Now, last, last week. We if talked, this is a redaction. It, it is a redaction. We talked last week about Adventure League, and I was very convinced that this was the kids' thing they did. Yes. However... I should have known because we're here every Wednesday, and I noticed once again we're not on the list. Yeah. <laughs> so it's hard to remember exactly what's going on when you're not on the list. Well, that's true. That's true. Adventure League is a D and D group. Yes. And we should know that because we always get in their way back here. Yeah, we always. Well, again, we cross paths. We cross paths. We cross the streets. Yeah. Um, and we mistakenly 
thought it was for kids. It's not for kids. Not for kids. Just going to go ahead. Going to go ahead and make that uh, very clear. It's not for kids. It's just regular D and D. Yeah, it's regular D and D, but it's an adventure league. So I think it's it's like a special thing that they do every week or whatever. Maybe one big campaign, something like that. We know it starts at six thirty. We know it's D and D. There's a lot of people involved, and we know there's probably 10, 12 people back there, right? Mm -hmm. Every week. And I think this week they're actually going to be fighting a hobbendoggler. Oh, ooh, hobbendoggler in his in his native environment. Yes. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay, Thursday. Now, I don't know what the heck I'm talking about here when it says well, historical it, war gaming. You know who's putting this on. Is it going to be Jamie? No. Hobbendogger? Hobbendogger. <laughs> He's putting this on too. What would they do without the Hobbendogger? I don't know. I don't know. This I, is, again, from my understanding, is they are taking and doing historical reenact, reenactment of actual battles. Okay, but in miniature, they're miniature not dressing up. No, no, no. There's no, nobody no. shooting caps out here in the, in no, the lobby. No, no. I, I have not seen a full-size cannon in the parking lot. Okay, all right. But well, that's good. Form, I, miniature I, I just don't, you know, I don't think it would fit back here. No, this would. I mean, I know that door opens, but I don't think it's wide enough to get that whole cannon in Yeah, there. we would be bringing in piece by piece. We'd be doing more of a signing of a peace tree. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's what <laughs> happens in here. Yeah. Okay, so historical yeah. war gaming from 5 to 8. Uh, this Thursday. And this Thursday would, well, I don't even know what day that is. Uh, it's going to be, that's going to be. Well, it's, not, it's, it's next Thursday, not tomorrow. Next Thursday. So we're not talking about Turkey Day. No, no. The next Thursday. So are we talking about, no, I think Friday is the 1st of December. Yeah. Is it I believe okay. Friday is the 1st of December. No, yeah. Yeah. So on Friday, they're going to have the same thing they have every Friday, which is Friday Night Magic. And yeah. here's what I understand about the magic on Fridays. Okay. You got these guys, they come in, they bring this pile full of stuff that they've, they've collected, right? These cards. Well, yeah, or whatever, a picture mug. Okay. Right? So they bring in all this stuff for magic, and then they buy these packs, and they open them right there and play with them. Oh. Is that how that works? I think so. It's, it's Yeah, you're building a deck on site. Mm. Is that right? You're building a deck on site. That sounds dangerous. You need a permit? Well, I'm sure there is a magic permit that they get. <laughs> it's got, it just goes up in the flames. I really, Friday Night Magic, I thought maybe it was maybe a roller skate. Well, thing. originally, well, it could have been a roller skate. I think last week we thought, we were missing for it, we thought it would involve the, ro the, 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 the rabbits and the birds and the yeah. top hats. Yeah, yeah, that we was We were different. very misinformed about that. Not any this is This is all cards. It, it all has to do with, uh, you are fighting monsters and things like that. Yes. But you kind of a, you get the decks, you build the you build the deck yeah. with the cards you're given, yeah. and then you play there. Sure. Okay. Well, I mean, I like a good magic show like anybody else. Yes. But again, with the space we have, I don't think you're bringing in a lot of the white tigers and things like that. No, to, to no. To really I, put on a big magic show. We did see one of the arcade machines disappear, but that was because it was broken. They took it out. Right. I don't think it had anything to do, do with the magic. magic. Yeah. Okay. And then we end up the week with Saturday. Yes. And that is a Yu-Gi-Oh tournament that they're having. Uh, the Yu-Gi-Oh tournament. Uh, the sign up for that is at five o'clock on Saturday, and the tournament I believe begins at six. Yes. Get here early. Get signed up. So I don't know a lot about Yu-Gi-Oh. And I don't know a lot about magic, but do those ever, I mean, are they, do they cross? Are they the same thing? No, I don't think they cross. I think that, like we talked about before, I think those, since we have such a small community, mm. I don't want to say that they're tolerant of one another, but it's, well, again, I again, think you certain have to be. groups. Yeah. yeah, you have to be. Okay, so Yu-Gi-Oh. But we are working on bringing in somebody to talk about some of these things. Some of the Yu-Gi-Oh? Well, and the magic. We've got our guy we want to oh, interview. Oh, the guy. The yeah, silent we, guy. We want to interview you. Yeah, if we ever get that, you guys, you guys will It'll see something treat. special. It'll be It'll a treat. Be special. Yeah. Okay, so that winds up the week. And again, I say Yu-Gi-Oh, the only thing I know about is the cartoon. But yeah. I'm, I'm assuming there's more to it. They there's got to here be. and watch the cartoon. Yeah. I mean, I don't know why they'd be buying cards if they were watching the cartoon. Well, maybe it's got like a little, you know, it, you, can't tell the, uh, you can't tell the players without a program. So you gotta have the cards. So you gotta have the cards. You go. Oh well, that's Billy. I see him up there. He's he's doing his magic stuff with his monsters. There you go. Building up his prestige. Maybe that's what. It, that's it. Yeah. Prestige again. Yeah. <laughs> prestige but live. All right. I think that's it. We'll see you next. See week. you next time. Bye.
let random people just call and get my info. <laughs> It's better and better. The deeper I go into the food, it tastes better and better. If anyone tried to take this away from me, I would kill them. <laughs> Have you guys ever seen the Harry Met Sally scene where she's screaming on top of her lungs? This is what this is. It's that good. <laughs> Everybody, this is JB, aka Big Fusion, here at King's Landing. I'm here to interview Mr. Tom Tom. And go ahead and tell them about yourself. Well, my name is uh, Tom Tom, born and raised right here in Waco. Um, Yo, know, uh, glad to have you. Glad to have you. Glad to be here. Um, here to talk about some of my comic books and some of my experience in collecting comic books. Been collecting comic books over 40 years. Well, I've always been a Marvel guy. Um, my goal was to own every Marvel comic that was ever made. Of course, I haven't reached that goal, but I'm still trying. You know, if I'm an addict, I'm addicted to comic books, and if I see a comic book that I don't have that's a Marvel, I have to buy it. Right, right. So how well, um, when I first started buying comics myself, they were like 60 cents a piece. Now the new comics can cost you anywhere from three, four, five dollars per comic, and they release two or three issues per issue, alternate issues, variant issues, and all that. So it can get pretty expensive. Um, you know, so it, it does cost you a lot of money, but you know, I, I work. It's good. It's good to have something to spend your money on that you can show for. So yeah, I don't mind doing that. So, what is the end game with these comics? <laughs> Well, when I first got into it, I thought I was collecting them to uh, to make money, but I can't sell them. Really. Right. <laughs> Comic, comics aren't exactly a big commodity now. Well, they are a big commodity. Some of the ones I have are a right. big commodity, but um, I can't sell them because I'm addicted to them. So I'm probably going to end up, when I die, you know, giving them to my nephew. 
Okay. I have a daughter. She told me that when she got him, she was selling my own. That kind of broke my heart. So right. I'm going to give him to him. All right. All right. So what it, what has changed while you've been collecting so good, man. Um, Well, what's changed is, um, like I said, I've been a Marvel guy. And uh, when Disney uh, bought Marvel, you know, it, mm -hmm. it kind of got a lot more commercialized, which is good for the comics. Yeah. But it's kind of bad for the people who... Uh, like me who are um, realists. You know, we uh, you know, we like to keep the story pure but it change up some of the stories to make it more marketable, uh, and, and I understand that. You know, and they had to uh, revamp the universe or restart the universe over because it was old. So that's some of the older comics that are back there, the actually the actual uh, origin stories are different now. So that's that's the biggest thing that's changed. Yeah. yeah. I mean, because, man, I know I know we're just watching a lot. They've changed up these origin stories yes. like, tremendously. Yes. Um, what is your relationship with the banks? Today? Well, um, I used to go when I was a kid, go over there to Bankston, go talk to Miss, Mrs. Bankston over there, and mm -hmm. I just started going over there. And I was working, you know, doing odd jobs. I was cutting grass. I go spend all my money over there buying the comics. And they've always been a very nice family. Uh, Brent, like a brother to me, you know. Uh, not only has he helped me with comics, he's helped me with some things in my personal life. So it's good to have a family story like that where they watch you grow up yeah. and you go over there and talk to them about anything. Okay. So okay. Very, very good, very good story to have in the community and uh, very family, a very good family. I love. That's great. Favorite hero is actually an anti-hero. It has to be the Punisher. Frank Punisher? Yes. Okay. So out of what you, uh, who, what's your favorite comic? Favorite comic, uh, what I bought today was some old Tales of Suspense. Uh, that was uh, the original comic that precursored Iron Man. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, in Tales of Suspense, you had the first appearance of, well, actually a precursor Captain America, but you had the per first appearance of Iron Man. And then when it gets to issue 99, it becomes Captain America, the first series that started in the You 60s. want to hold up some of those? I'll hold You're up. Show, show up? Show up? Yeah, my grandpa's a big collector. Yes. So some of these, uh, I just bought just a few today. I hope to come back and bring some more and actually show off my collection. I'm very proud of it. Uh, it is, like I say, very vast. Uh, this right here is uh, one of the original. This is a pre-Marvel. It's, it's an Atlas comic which was the company before it became Marvel. Right. And that's one of the original tales of Spence with Electro, who was bought back in the modern uh, Marvel universe. So, mm -hmm. um, a few more that I have here. Uh, some of them are in good shape, some are in bad shape. What I usually do is I buy it if I see it. If I find one that's in better shape, I'll go ahead and replace it. And, Give the uh, crappy comic to my uh, nephew. Yeah. Do you ever do you ever get them graded? <laughs> yes, I do get them graded uh, with uh, CGC, uh -huh. and they get slabbed up. Uh, the thing about slapping them up though is you can't never touch them. Again. You're right. You know, it's it's uh, it's going to be in the uh, slab, and you can look at it. And so, if I get a really good copy, like some of these, I have a, another copy of these, and they have they are slabbed up. <laughs> Sorry. So have you ever actually, you know, you, you've read most of them? I read all of them. You've read all of them? Yes. That's crazy. My I, grandpa, I can remember the stories too. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My grandpa never let us touch them. There's some that's never been cracked. Yeah. It's just crazy. Yeah. Well, um, I uh, once I read them, I usually, if, if they're the really good copies, like I said, I bought these copies up here because I didn't know who was all going to be touching them. <laughs> Um, I put them up. Uh, I have a storage room where I keep a lot of them, mm -hmm. and it's uh, climate controlled. Um, and I go there sometimes just to go look through them, but I, I don't ever bring them out of the bag again. I got you. The story, so. so what got you into doing comics? Actually, um, my father had a bunch <laughs> that he had, mm -hmm. and he gave them to me. And he happened to pass away when I was 16. So whenever he passed away, I started buying them because it was something to kind of get my mind off of him passing away. Right. And he started me uh, to buy them. So I just, you know, I guess like Stan Lee, the stories that he wrote were really good stories that got me through something. So okay. that's just why I did it. All right. So you said Frank Castle is your favorite anti-hero. Frank Castle is my favorite anti-hero. Now, this is a really dumb question because Frank, Frank Castle is my favorite anti-hero. Uh, but why, why Frank Castle? Well, um... Before he came out, they came out with the first Punisher comics. I don't know if you realize when he when he appeared in all the Marvel comics before he had his own series. 
Frank was, you can't say he was a bad guy, but he was kind of crazy. Well, yeah. He, he had a he had a few issues, and um, you you can see why he did it. But it was the first character that I saw. It had to be the first anti-hero to come out. Mm -hmm. uh, well, one of the first ghost uh, people say Ghost Rider was, where you didn't know whether to root for the guy or or not root for the guy. You weren't exactly sure if he was a hero or not a hero. Because some issues he would actually save somebody. Some issues he would take it too far and actually do something worse. So the fact that you couldn't put him in the category as, as a hero, but you still were rooting for him, mm -hmm. it was kind of intriguing. So I uh, I just fell in, I can't say funny, you fell in love with the character, but I just really liked the guy. I really liked the struggles that he went through, especially the struggles in his mind, because he was always trying to do the right thing, but his way of doing the right thing may not have been the actually the right way to do it. Right, right. So how many of these comics do you actually own? I couldn't even tell you. Just a I, guesstimate. I, I, guesstimate, I would probably say has to be over 20,000. 20? 20,000 20, over that. Okay, in the DC universe, of course, you have to go with uh, Batman or Superman, but I'm going to take it uh, a little bit deeper than that. Okay. There was a comic book character. I liked all the DC war comics. Mm -hmm. I liked Black Hawk, the Unknown Soldier, yes, Sergeant yes. Rock. Uh, there was a guy named Ulysses S. Hazard, and he yeah, was code named Grave, gro code named Grave Digger. And uh, what I liked about him is he, the story set in World War II. And he has to take on the role as an undercover grave digger. He's actually mm -hmm. an agent working for the U.S. government. Yeah. But he has pretended he's a grave digger so he can carry out missions for the government. And, um, you know, he, he was an a Afro, African-American character. And uh, I'm African-American, so I was proud to see that he was in that role, especially in World War II. What about Black Panther? Black Panther is, 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 uh, is Marvel, and I do have a lot of early Black Panther appearances. In fact, next time, if I do come... I'll bring one that's signed by Stan Lee since he was a creator of Black Panther. Black Panther does happen to be the first um, hero of color in, in the in the actual Marvel universe, but he is not the first African American. The first African American is a Falcon. So you know, the Black Panther was from Africa. But a lot of people don't know this too, and whether you agree with them or not, the um, original Black Panther Party was named after the Black Panther. The Black Panther precedes them. And so they thought they saw he was a strong character, and that's what I guess they were trying to portray. Not sure if I agree with all their methods and everything right, and right, like that. Right. But they saw there was a strong character, so they used that to uh, as their mascot. There. All so, right. Well, we're going to avoid going down that. Path. Well, not, not getting political. <laughs> just saying that's, that's one that's one fact that people didn't know. Yeah. You're right. Right. <laughs> yes, right. Right. Yes, right. Yes, no, that's that's uh, that's great, man. Yeah. Um, um, the Black Panther movie's coming out soon. It looks like it's going to be. Uh, uh, very good movie, and again, I, you know, not putting anything in it, but I am proud as an African American that they're coming out with a with a movie that's going to uh, show you know a black comic book character mm -hmm. that that actually shows everybody in a positive light. So, okay. Yes. So since we're talking about TV shows, movies, uh, I'm gonna take it off subject for one last question. Okay. What do, have you seen the new Punisher? I have watched the new Prime Show on Netflix. It is amazing. It is amazing. It is, it is amazing. Uh, what's your thoughts on it? Uh, I liked, you know, the actor they got to play him. I remember he was on The Walking Dead, and uh, I think they couldn't have got a better character to play him. Um, I was actually surprised that they actually stayed true to some of the things in the comic book because it is, you know, Marvel's now owned by Disney. And some of the stories in uh, the comic book with the Punisher are very dark. Yes. But it seems like the TV show, the Netflix show, is actually staying true to that. And uh, I am glad that they did that because, you know, his story deserves, deserves to be told, you know. Um, you know, you, you can pass judgment on whether you agree with his methods or not, you know. But everybody, you know, he's, he's a uh, flawed character, you know, he has flaws, you know, and he, he's been hurt, so he does what he does. But, you know, the story needs to be told the way it was written. That's so all I'm, I'm happy for. It was, it was really good. And I think that's all the questions I have, man. All right, it was great talking to you. I hope you come back and bring some more stuff to show you and bring some cool stuff Heck that yeah, I have. Because you, you got know. a lot of good stuff.